and they usually put a lot of whipped cream. You can have a cherry, which I like. It was so good, I could take a bath in it. Take yeah. a bath in it. <laughs> Super big. It was like it huge. Huge. It's, huge. Yeah. it's like it that is. big. Hey, you guys are, are describing these so well that I, I'm, I'm hungry. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by... It's the room that's less sort of private and more private. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com Leslie Sabraco, welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. We have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. But this week, we've invited a brand new generation of foodies to take a seat at the Check Please table. 12-year-old Jean-Luc plays classical clarinet, performing works by Beethoven and Mozart with the Napa Youth Symphony. And 13-year-old Cowie also loves performing. She's been singing since she was three in her church choir and on stage since she was nine. But first, Lucy is a 12-year-old gymnast who is happiest up high on the balance beam. How does she get all the energy for those flips and round-offs? With hearty breakfasts of steak and eggs at a place that's been a favorite of hardcore athletes and brunchers for more than 30 years. In Mill Valley, it's the Dipsy Cafe. So the Dipsy Cafe is located on Thumb Junction on Shoreline Highway. It's right by the water and to me it's like the door to Mill Valley. It's the first place you're going to go through when you come in. It's a very special little place. The Dipsy Cafe name came from the Dipsy Race which is one of the biggest race in America. It starts in downtown Mill Valley and goes all around the mountain, all the way down to Stinson Beach. And it has been happening since 1905. So after the Dipsy Race, the runners would come over and uh, get free smoothies. Our menu is really big. We have specials every day. The original owner is John Ciotas, and his late wife, Corey, she was Greek-Italian, and he is Greek. They both just chose all the best recipes that they had growing up. All the food is fresh, and it's all made here. Personally, I like the Eros with the Greek salad. The kids love the pancakes. They love the pancakes, the French toast. We serve them with fresh fruit, strawberries, blueberries, bananas. We've been coming since he was a baby. You come in and very often you see like people that know each other and uh, you know, sometimes they leave their table, go sit on another table with somebody else. It's like home. Lucy, the Dipsy Cafe. Now, this place is classic. People have been going there. I've gone there many times over the years. <laughs> How long have you been going? I've been going almost since I came to Mill Valley when I moved there. I also like this place it's because it's very nice to have um, family occasions there. And I had my birthday um, breakfast there because I live really close to the Dipsy, and I just thought it would be really fun for everybody to go there. Well, and it can get crowded, can't it? It can get place. very crowded. Mm -hmm. A lot of people go there in Mill Valley. It's one of the only right. big, big diners that everybody so knows. So when you get up in the morning and you, you know you're going there, do you go, ooh, I'm going to order what? I usually, my first one that comes to my mind would be steak and eggs because mm. I am a big meat eater. <laughs> um, Say hello to Jean-Luc, our vegetarian. <laughs> Hi. Um, yes, I usually get the steak that's really well cooked. You can smell it in the kitchen. Um, it's cooked well, has good flavor, and then like one of my other things that I like on the side is the potatoes because they're really crunchy on the outside and really soft on the inside. Do you order anything else besides steak and eggs when you go? I get two really fluffy buttermilk pancakes, mm -hmm. which um, is good for me and my brother because we love big stacks of pancakes. Yeah. It's just really soft and moist and it's just really And they've nice got a whole have. section on the menu for yeah. pancakes, yeah. don't yeah. they? Okay. My grandma, she also had the um, buttermilk pancakes 
and they're pretty good. They were a little tangy. It's not the right pancakes for me, but they were delicious. Oh, because of the buttermilk. Because of the buttermilk. Gave buttermilk it a little tang. Gave it a mm -hmm. little tang. Are they big pancakes? Yeah, they're yeah. big pancakes. Sometimes mm -hmm. they can be blueberry or chocolate chip. Yeah, they... my dad had the blueberry pancakes. Oh. And did you get in there and get a bite of your yeah. dad's pancakes? Did he, he let he, that? Like, he saved me a little. <laughs> he, he, he eats a lot, so I didn't know he, he would save me some, but he did. And um. The blueberries is like really sweet and right. like with blueberry waffles, they may like just put like a couple of blueberries, like five, but right. this had a lot of blueberries. And huh. What about you? What oh, did you have? Um, I had the Dipsy Burger and uh, uh, with a side of salad. And uh, on the burger, it came with just all the regular burger toppings, lettuce, tomato, et cetera. And it came with a big pickle, which was delicious. <laughs> what else did you have? I had the fish and chips. And it was deep fried really, really good. And it was super crispy. And then it came with fries. And it came with the tartar sauce. Jean-Luc, what else did you have? I had the tofu scramble. Mm -hmm. And like when I imagined tofu scrambles, like like scrambled eggs. Um, but this one was like a stir fry, which is still really good. Right. And it's like cauliflower, there's mushrooms, there's onions, mm -hmm. and then the tofu were like cut like really thin. Okay. It, it was lacking a little bit of flavor. Okay. But still the vegetables, or a lot of variety of vegetables, and I really like that. And what about Eggs Benedict? I get Eggs Benedict because my dad likes Eggs Benedict. He likes ham on the bottom, and it's really good inside because it has like the really nice thick eggs, which I like. And then the sauce the on Holland top. Hollandaise sauce. Yeah, mm. it's really good. It mm -hmm. kind of adds a little saltiness and tanginess to the dish. And a lot of calories. It's why mm. I love Eggs Benedict. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> my dad also got the Eggs Benedict, but his, his had salmon on it. Oh. And it came with a big, like, huge, like, portobello mushroom. Right. And it came on an uh, English muffin. Right. So I don't eat mushrooms, but mm -hmm. I ate it without the mushrooms, and it was right. good. And when you get brunch or lunch or breakfast, do you get some juice alongside it? Or? Yeah, I usually get orange juice, milk, or hot chocolate, and they usually put a lot of whipped cream with sprinkles on it. And yeah. if you want it, you can have a cherry, which I like. I yeah. also had the hot chocolate, and I like that it had a lot of foam cream mm -hmm. and, like, the cream just is so good. And did you like the atmosphere of the place? Yeah, it was like very homey. Mm -hmm. Somewhere like you can go to relax, have mm -hmm. a fun time, not somewhere you need to be like all fancy. Like right, very right. family friendly. Mm -hmm. It was a really fun place. Um, and also it like had rustic decorations. Mm -hmm. It reminded me of like a barn home almost. And it was really yeah. nice. And I liked the way they had the table set up. It was mm -hmm. like a country home. Yeah. And it's right by this little stream there, which is mm -hmm. cool. Cause it's like after you're done eating, you can look out and you can see the stream. And the service was great too. So did you feel like there was a lot of food? Was the portion yeah, size like good? The portions were mm -hmm. humongous. So, right. And that's good. Cause you can take it home, have it for like a, the next breakfast mm -hmm. or we yeah. took some home too and ate it in the car there. <laughs> so. all right lucy your spot give us a quick summary a uh, great place for uh, a lot of people it's very rustic and kind of like going there for family occasions all right and jean luc very family friendly place and very scenic with the canal um great food all right, Kelly. It's very scenic, it's a family-friendly place, and it's affordable, and it's delicious. All right, if you would like to try the Dipsy Cafe, it's on Shoreline Highway in Mill Valley. It's open every day for breakfast and lunch, and the average tab per person is under $20. Jean-Luc loves making Italian food, picking homegrown tomatoes and peppers to whip up an arrabbiata sauce with his mom. When they dine out, the family sits right at the bar so they can watch wood-fired pizzas being made to order by a pizzaiolo. No California fusion on the menu at his Italian pick. With a focus on traditional recipes, it's Napa's Camomi Osteria. Food is a religion in Italy. We take it very seriously. And we gather around the table with community, with friends, you know, with family. So it's, there's always an opportunity to eat. You are eating all day, basically, and it's, 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 it's as funny as it is, but it's, it's, it's like that. We're three partners, Stefano, Dario, and myself. And we're from Veneto. 
And so we're losing our roots, evidently. We're losing our traditions. And so what I do is I look for the oldest version of a recipe that I can find and offer them to the people who don't know them. And I change the menus, so I rotate regions, but I always try to offer something weird, something you know that challenges taste buds and ideas. We're sticklers with not just the type of food, but also how you eat it. So we don't cut the pizza. Commonly, the pizza is eat with the hands. So it's, you tear the pizza and then you eat it. Keep in mind that pizza was born to be a street food. The traditional way to eat pizza is called ad libretto. That means like, like a book, like a little book. So basically you fold the pizza, you put the pizza in a piece of paper, and, and then you, you eat the pizza down the road. In Venice, there's a big tradition of the happy hour, and it's called the aperitivo. Right after work, you take a break with uh, some appetizers, some little bites, and they're called chiquete. It's kind of like a grounding moment where you take a breath and let the day go. It's a religion. Five o'clock, you've got to have your spritz. So how did your family discover this spot? My mom went to it, and then she said she like really liked it, and so we had to go check it out. And then once I tried it, I'm like, this is like the best place I've ever gone to. <laughs> yeah. And what is it about the place that you really love? So like I really like the ambiance, mm -hmm. like the industrial kind of feel to it. Mm -hmm. Also there's like a silent movie on the wall that they're right. always playing. Right. Mm -hmm. And also the people are very um, kind and always checking right. in on you. Tell me one pizza that you love because this is a real Napolitano style of yeah. pizza. Yeah, so I used to get the margarita pizza all the time, but I've tried this new pizza. It's like, it's the fried pizza. Ooh. And what I love yeah. about it is that they fry the dough just a little and then mm -hmm. put in the wood fire oven and make it. And then the tomato sauce is so good. It's so sweet and rich in flavor. Mm. And then what's different from the margarita pizza is that it's like more thick. Also, the mozzarella, it gives it a really smoky flavor because mm -hmm. it's like a smoky mozzarella. A smoked mozzarella. Mm -hmm. I also had the um, pizza, the pizza frita mantiara. Yeah. It was really good and I agree with him. Like it's fried and then it's finished in the wood oven and it's just super delicious. Did you have pizza as well? Yeah, I had the margarita pizza yeah. because I like thin mm -hmm. and then kind of thicker on the crust part. Mm -hmm. And it was really nice because mm -hmm. the mozzarella on top felt really nice and kind of fresh and Mm -hmm. Everything Smoky. is yeah. locally sourced yeah. or, yeah. you know, from Italy. Mm -hmm. And when you read the menu, they give you the name of the dish and then they give you the region that it's from in Italy. And coming from an Italian family, I've never had anything that tastes like this. Uh, like, yeah. Yeah. you can taste the freshness and you can tell that it's cared for. It's not something that's thrown together. It has yeah. a purpose, kind yeah. of. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. and really authentic. Yeah. And for, like, the appetizers, we get the Mr. Conza salad. And it's like shaved pecorino cheese, and it's like big pecorino, which I love. I love cheese, <laughs> and also hazelnuts. Oh. And then the dressing is what really makes it happen because it's like lemon flavored. Mm -hmm. And pecorino is such a good cheese, mm -hmm. fantastic yeah. cheese. You know Romano? Mm -hmm. Yes, I know my cheeses. I love them. <laughs> yeah. And what else did you have? I for an appetizer, I had the salami plate. It had multiple meats. It had prosciutto. It had salami, and it had different types of cheeses with honey. Mm -hmm which I thought was interesting, and it went really together mm -hmm. because cheese is like a tangy kind of flavor, and then the honey kind of just sweetened it out. Sweetened it out, balanced, balanced it. it out. What was your next dish? Oh, my, my next dish was probably the favorite one, the gnocchi alla Roma. Mm. So it was so good because it's baked semolina, mm -hmm. and semolina's kind of like a grits type texture yeah. and it's just so, warmed a little bit yeah, more it's, when you, it's yeah. really good mm -hmm. and it's just super cheesy and it comes with organic sage butter on top which mm. is like oh, yeah. the best yeah. ever and like I could take a bath in it <laughs> you could take yeah. a bath in it so yeah my pasta carbonara and I didn't know that it was the the sauce isn't actually a cream even though it tastes right. like a cream it's it uh, like egg cream. yolks mm -hmm. and other things mixed together right. and it makes it like kind of like a thick, mm. silky sauce on right. top and the little bits of bacon and ham on the bottom. Yeah. It's really nice, it balances it out. Oh, I'll tell you, you guys are, are describing these so well that I, I'm, I'm hungry, <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. So, you know, it is a bustly place. It's... I really liked the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought the lights from the ceiling mm -hmm. were really cool yeah. and I thought right. the wooden tables was a beautiful touch. I also like the atmosphere. Um, and we, we got to sit upstairs in the private dining room. Oh. 
Oh, and it was so it was it, it was so cool because it was like little celebrity sitting up there, <laughs> and it was super cool. And then also, I agree with her. The lights that hang from the ceiling are so nice. Kind of remind me of like if you ever seen the movie Tinkerbell, how like when oh, they're yeah. in that magical tree and how it's like all sparkly. That's what it reminded me of. And they have for the adults that go with you, they have a not super extensive but very well selected wine list and a fantastic cocktail menu. So like happy hour mm -hmm. is like it starts at five, goes till seven. You get a pizza, margarita, a spritz, and like a red wine. Wow. So my parents have the alcohol. You know? <laughs> I have the pizza. You have the pizza and yeah. everybody's everybody's, everybody's happy during yeah. happy hour. Yeah. That's, the win -win. One, that's the point of it. Yeah. Well what about desserts? Did anybody have any desserts? I did. I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So panna cotta is probably one of my favorites yeah. because it comes in a, like a little cup and then mm -hmm. the bottom it's like a vanilla bean custard mm -hmm. and then it has like a caramel topping and it's super mm -hmm. good. Yeah. We always get the mille fogue mm -hmm. and it's like thin like type like wafer kind. Right. I had a milfoy as well. Mm -hmm. It's a puff pastry. Mm -hmm. Milfoy means a thousand layers right. yeah. and it's very crumbly. It's baked really well. Mm -hmm. It's very mm -hmm. tough to make because mm -hmm. you have to keep rolling it and rolling mm -hmm. it and folding it. Folding Tough to make, but delicious to eat. But the middle part is vanilla-based custard mm -hmm. cream, mm -hmm. and then they put powdered sugar and a um, thin layer of, it was like a caramel sauce. It's delicious. Nice. Mm -hmm. And then when it's in season, they put like the strawberries, oh. and it's so, so good, and then the strawberry syrup. So amazing. <laughs> yeah. So good. Yeah. All right, John luc your spot. Give us a quick summary. Well, it's a beautiful place. Great people, great food. Make sure to try the pizza. All right, and Lucy? Uh, great place to learn about Italian uh, history, how they make things, um, great atmosphere, and divine food. All right, and Kelly? Um, it's a great, authentic Italian place, and it's super pretty to be inside of. If you would like to try Kamomi Osteria, it's on First Street in Napa. It's open for dinner Tuesday through Thursday and lunch and dinner Friday through Sunday. It's closed on Mondays. Reservations are recommended and the average tab per person is around $50. Over the past 30 years, no less than three generations of Cowie's family have eaten at her favorite diner. And now she's paving the way as the fourth generation to slide into a booth, kick back and tuck into generous plates of homestyle Mexican comfort food. In Pittsburgh, it's New Mecca Cafe. <laughs> Okay, New Mecca Cafe is an institution in Pittsburgh. It's been here so long. How many years have you been coming here? 48 years. 48 years. My name is Terry Muñiz. I am the owner of the New Mecca Cafe, which we've run since 1964. I was in junior high in 1955. I started working here making tortillas, and this is where I met my husband. He would help me with the tortillas. And when the previous owner died, and, and there was a chance to buy the restaurant. We bought it for $2,000. Yeah, well, my husband's name was Guillermo Muñiz. He loved people, and people loved him back. You know, he never met a person who wasn't his friend. That's the chicken, that's the beef, stir fry. Very popular. It's not fancy, uh, but it's tasty, and there's lots of it. The thing is huge. Now it's generations of people working here. Uh, my nephew, Abel, is a greeter. I was 11 when I started. My daughter-in-law works here, and she's been working here for 22 years. <laughs> the cooks, she's been here for 45, maybe 40 years. When my husband died, I had to take over the business. You know, this was his dream. I would say now it's my obligation to keep it going. Hey! How are you? Doing good. I'll be 80 this year. You know, I see people who are 80 and this can barely walk. I can still walk. <laughs> now, Cowie, this is an institution in Pittsburgh. This place has been there a long time, yeah, right? It's been there super long. Right. And it's and a family-owned business. Family-owned business, and your family has mm -hmm. been going there for a long time. Yeah, my great-grandparents, my grandparents, and my parents, and then now me. 
And what is it at New Mecca that you crave when you go there since you're there all the time? Uh, the chorizo and eggs and the veggie burrito mm -hmm. and the nachos. Mm -hmm. uh, the nachos, so basically what it is, it's a huge plate and it has steak, it has all the fresh greens that you would get on nachos like lettuce, tomatoes, etc. And then it's drizzled with this fountain of uh, nacho cheese. Mm -hmm. And you can get any meat you want, mm -hmm. but I prefer steak because that's like probably one of my favorite meats. John, look, what was your experience? So uh, they serve chips and salsa, like mm -hmm. as an appetizer. And then also there's like this bean enchilada kind of dip mm -hmm. and yeah. then like a salsa. Well, just they a have a salsa. whole place on the menu yeah, for yeah. bean dips, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The bean dip is really famous, and mm -hmm. um, the bean dip you can even get as a main dish because you can put ground beef in the bean dip, mm -hmm. and it's so good. And then, like, sometimes when I'm feeling extra hungry, my dad, he'll order it, and then sometimes we'll sit on the couch and eat it with a spoon because it's so good. <laughs> the bean dips, you like the bean dip? The bean it's dip was really good, and mm -hmm. had the cheese and the um, little bit of pepper and the bean sauce. Mm -hmm. that, what else did you have? I had a steak sandwich. Um, it was um, pretty good. The meat was a little thin, and the lettuce was a bit much, but it was overall pretty good. I liked the sauce a lot. Mm -hmm. and what was the sauce? The sauce, I think it was like a mayonnaise kind of pickle-ish thing, mm -hmm. but it was really good. I thought it worked well with You the... just wanted more meat. It was a yeah. little thin. So I had a potato taco, and then I had the bean taco. Okay. What I liked about the potato taco, the potatoes, the texture was so amazing. And then with the potatoes, they were soft, but the, like the shell, it wasn't too hard and it wasn't too soft. It was like just in the middle. Mm -hmm. And all like all the vegetables went in so perfectly together. That's mm -hmm. coming from a vegetarian. That's, mm -hmm. that's yeah. high praise right there. <laughs> and what about the other taco that you've had? So the bean taco is just basically the same thing. Some beans and it has a little more vegetables and like a smoky roasted flavor mm -hmm. that I like. So tell me about some more of those dishes that you ordered. Um, so the veggie burrito, which is really good. And, and I would say for, He's going, yeah, yeah. for vegetarians, it's something yeah. good. Um, it comes with refried beans, or you can get kidney beans. Mm -hmm. But I get refried beans. It comes with lettuce, tomato. Mm -hmm. And I also like that it comes with a salsa and sour cream and guac. So you can yeah. put your own flavor into it if mm -hmm. you want to. And yeah. I, I really liked it. Yeah, my mom also had that. She had the, it was like super big. It was like <laughs> huge. It's huge. Yeah. It's like it that is. big. That's about half your size. Yeah. yeah. That's like a, a yeah. burrito bigger than you. What she <laughs> make? Yeah. Yeah. Grande. She, a burrito grande. Yeah. <laughs> and what she really grande. liked was the guacamole. It had like a lemony flavor. And what else did you have, Lucy? Uh, my dad got a chili relleno, mm -hmm. which I thought Ooh. was pretty good. It had a very nice cheese. Mm -hmm. It was a little different from a regular chili relleno because usually it's kind of big pieces of the chili pepper. Mm -hmm. It could have had a bit more spice on it, but it tastes good. What else do you get? The chorizo and eggs, which is a great breakfast thing. And my dad, he even makes chorizo and eggs for us at the house. And you can get- Are theirs or your dad's better? Oh, uh... I know, I'm putting you on the spot, aren't I? <laughs> New Mecca, sorry, Dad. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you know, Dad's is good too. But um, New Mecca's is super good, and you can get it scrambled, or you can get the eggs however you want them, like over easy. And it's really good because it's hearty, and it's something that will just wake you up in the morning because it's just super good, and it's mm -hmm. authentic Mexican, mm -hmm. like breakfast dish. Did you enjoy kind of the feel of the place? Mm -hmm. The interior was mm -hmm. um, very well done. The ceiling I thought was really interesting, <laughs> which you don't find a lot like in regular restaurants. The tin. It was like feeling. Yeah, My dad okay. told me that one of the people that worked there was the owner, did something for a baseball team. He was oh, a A's. big caterer the, um, for the A's. Yeah. Right. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, he died, sadly, um, yeah. and, you know, he'll be missed very much by Pittsburgh. But um, his family has taken over the spot and has done so much and mm -hmm. has really made it a historical place. And if the New Mecca was ever to go, I would go with it. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw like a lot of families there. There's a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, it's definitely family yeah. friendly. Mm -hmm. And I like it because like when you go, you see familiar faces. Mm -hmm. And then also they promote local businesses. Right. And they do cater to my um, local theater, which is right across the street. That's great. So right after practices or a show, I can go right over and get some New Mecca, which is yeah. great. Yeah. Right. Nice. Well, this is your restaurant, so please wrap it up for us. Um, overall, it's just a great place that you can get authentic Mexican food. Um, um, it has great scenery, and the food is delicious. All right, and Lucy? Um, it's a beautiful interior. It has um, pretty good service, and it has 
um, pretty good food as well. Okay, and Sean Luke's amazing Mexican food. The people there are great, great place in Pittsburgh to go for food. All right, if you would like to try a new Mecca Cafe, it's on Railroad Avenue in Pittsburgh. It's open every day except Wednesday. For breakfast, lunch, and dinner, the average tab per person is around $15. I have to thank my fabulous guests on this week's show. Lucy, who enjoys hearty breakfasts in the shadow of Mount Tam at Mill Valley's Dipsy Cafe. Jean-Luc, who shared his amore for the wood-fired pizzas at Camomi Osteria in Napa. And Cowie's historic new Mecca Cafe, home to Mexican specialties cooked with love in Pittsburgh. We really want to hear about your experiences at any of the restaurants we've been talking about, so keep in touch with us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter, or better yet, post your favorite food shots on Instagram with the hashtag Bay Area Bites. And don't forget that you can watch any of the shows on our website at kqed.org slash check, please. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check, Please! Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Check, Please! Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by the Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com It's the room that's less sort of private and more private. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. All right, I know you have a beautiful singing voice. Can you give me just a short little bit of something? How deep is your love? How deep is your love? Cause I really need to learn. Cause we're living in a world of fools, breaking us down.